Hello, hello. Okay. How is everybody? Um, I'm Hannah Ross. I'm pelvic health ther therapist and owner of Vital Cities of Therapy and Wellness in Toronto. And, and I'm joined here by my very dear friend, one of my favorite people, uh, Anita Lambert. She's your pelvic holistic health physio and pelvic health physiotherapist. And today we're going to be talking about the first two weeks postpartum. And um, specifically, we're going to tell you some suggestions and um, really our top tips for how to optimize um, this period when you're healing and hanging out at home, you know, just cruising. It's really a time when um, you're really just adapting to life with baby. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. Um, please say hello. Let us know. Are you pregnant? Do you have any babies? Um, how, how soon postpartum are you? How many weeks along are you? Um, and we love your questions. So please keep them coming. Um, what we're going to really chat about today is Anita's and I, um, are, are really our top tips for you during this time. Um, and Really at this time, it's actually not a period where as pelvic health physios, we see these clients. So it's really important to give this information so that women feel like they can control at this time in their life. Mm -hmm. um, which yeah, no, definitely in terms of, I think that's key, Hannah. And, um, and this information also is because we don't see um, postpartum clients this early, like in the first two weeks, um, this is information we're sharing with them while they're pregnant. Yeah. So learning this, if you're expecting you're watching this, you're going to be ahead of the game. And it's so helpful, especially the items and the resources that we're going to chat about to have these in place beforehand um, and share these with friends and family. Because I think one of, uh, Hannah, you probably agree, like one of the most common things we hear from women we see after birth and this is months or years down the road, is they're like, why did no one tell me this? Yeah. Number, like, one, if I, number one comment, for sure. Yeah, if I knew this when I was pregnant, I could have just been that much more prepared and more confident with, I call it like the postpartum fog, like those first few weeks where you're just trying to figure <laughs> stuff out, right? I um, love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I have one, Hannah has three. So the fact of Hannah going through with like, and many of you watching this have a newborn, but then you may have one, two, or more other little ones in tow, right? It's just a lot at once. So anything you can do to prepare before, just that much more helpful. Amazing. Amazing. So if you're pregnant, if you have friends that are pregnant, if you have family who are pregnant, if you have family and friends who are postpartum, please share this with them. Because like Anita said, um, as pelvic health physios, we usually see our clients at like six weeks postpartum. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that they should come ahead of time. So mm -hmm. let's get people um, empowered and informed before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair? Okay. So um, please send us any of your questions. We're happy to answer them. Um, let's just jump in. Yeah? Sounds good. Okay, so Anita, I'm gonna ask you a question first. Mm -hmm. It's very common, mm -hmm. um, and I know that you love to talk about this. So, when women birth vaginally, how do they like? What can you suggest to help with mm -hmm. their perineal recovery? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, and this is a really good question. And I don't have my pelvis with me, but Hana does. So, Hana, can you at least show everyone who's watching, in case you don't know? You hear this word perineum, where where is the perineum? I'm gonna take out my organs though. Yeah. Can you show yes? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So this yeah. is the vaginal opening. Mm -hmm. This is the anus here. And the perineum is essentially this area in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're looking at kind of that whole area. So as Hana mentioned, what can you do to prepare for your recovery after a vaginal birth? And so depending, you know, it doesn't matter if you've had an episiotomy, which is where they will cut so they um, anywhere. Oh, around there's my pelvis. There it is. There we go. So it may be anywhere around the opening yeah. um, or you may have natural tearing or you may have no tearing at all. 
Um, regardless, though, those muscles in that area have gone through a lot of stretching and opening um, and can be quite swollen and sore afterwards. So regardless, like I said, tearing, no tearing or episiotomy, these items can really help with your comfort afterwards. So one of my first um, favorite things, and if you have a hospital birth, you'll often be given this in the hospital. Um, if you have a home birth or birth in, um, a birthing center, um, you may get access to these two or you may purchase this on your own in terms of the first thing is a peri bottle. So okay. it looks it looks just like like a, a water a, bottle. A ketchup, a ketchup bottle. <laughs> Pretty like much. Yeah. A and diner. <laughs> yeah. An empty ketchup bottle. It's a good way to, to <laughs> talk about it. It's clear. And you can put warm, ideally warm water in it. You can even add some herbs if you want. What you do is actually while you're going pee, you would actually spray the bottle towards your urethra. Can you show the urethra, um, Hannah? Um, while, sure can. <laughs> while you're going pee. So, I mean, you just would. The urethra is, oh, where are we? There we yeah. are. Okay. Yeah. It's actually up here, right above the vaginal opening. That's see. where your pee comes out of. So, so right in terms of, whoop, there we go. Yeah. Um, so basically while you're going pee, you would aim the water in the same area because sometimes um, going pee, there may be some burning or itching or just not comfortable feeling. Yeah. So that warm water can actually be like almost soothing um, while it's happening. And you may need that the first few days or first few weeks um, after birth. So because your urine water. is acidic, right? So mm -hmm. if there's any th open wound there, yeah. Well, Fun, friendliest addition to yeah. the <laughs> yeah so number one is peri bottle so check if you're at a hospital they likely will supply it or at least here in canada they often do um and if you have a home birth or birth center check um how you can access that um number two is witch hazel which is one of my favorite things for anything around the perineum but make sure it is alcohol free so again if you've had any tearing you do not want alcohol on that area um it and, tends to feel kind of like pee <laughs> yeah so you want alcohol free witch hazel toner and this is one this is one of my favorite ones here so i don't know if you can see there theirs yeah. is the company but i mean any it doesn't really matter yeah. um you can generally get it at a health food store um or online um, at many different uh, places if you know well.ca that's usually where I get mine um, and it's a toner so a lot of women will use this I use this for my face um, but it's actually <laughs> amazing for, yeah it's a, it's really great stuff so for postpartum how you would use it is you've likely or if you don't know this this is uh, really important information you're going to want to have like super pads afterwards for the yeah. bleeding that happens after birth, which is common and totally normal. It's how your body is, you know, getting rid of that after birth. And so on the pads, you would actually put witch hazel on it before you put it on. If you want to do what you call padsicle, so where you put the pads in the freezer so that when you put them on, they're cold and that can be soothing, you would put witch hazel on before you put them in the freezer. And I always um, suggest that they people put them into an individual Ziploc bags mm -hmm. so they can just grab them individually mm -hmm. and they stay clean yeah so what I did too is speaking of Ziploc bags so if you know the like big size ones you can actually fit three pads in them awesome. so I would do three and I would like layer them in the freezer beautiful um so yeah so that's really handy it also is really handy for hemorrhoids or anything around the rectal opening yeah um and in fact it's in a lot of the over-the-counter hemorrhoid mm -hmm. solutions yeah. So yeah, it can be really soothing. And you may have heard of tux pads, which actually have witch hazel in them. There are other ingredients in tux pads. So depending what you want to put on that area, if you just want pure witch hazel, then you basically can almost make your own mini pads, um, like little, little pads that you can dab on the area. Um, yeah. So witch hazel, super, super awesome. helpful um, with that. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is, again, if you're in a hospital, you'll access these in the hospital. And even with a home birth or birth center, I know with my home birth, I was still able to access these, which are um, disposable underwear. So if anyone's Key watching this. people, disposable yeah. <laughs> underwear. Yeah, they're like mesh underwear that like they're just they they fit but they're not tight right like afterwards you'll know you don't want anything really tight around your abdomen and Hannah will talk more about recovery after cesarean birth but regardless you don't want a lot of 
tightness around your center. Yeah. Um, so looking into getting some of those mesh underwear, I know you can order them online as well, or you can even just, you know, try to find the largest, um, like cotton, uh, plain kind of underwear you can yeah. so that especially those first few weeks after again you're not going to want something tight around that area so key kind of disposable or just really loose fitting underwear yeah. um, for after love it um next is a sits bath and i'd love to hear if anyone's watching if you've heard of what a sits bath is um or if you've used one so basically were you doing sits bath? Yes, I did. Well, so it was like a go to. Yeah. And either a sits bath or bathtub and everyone has, you know, different preferences, kind of what they find comfortable or what's the quickest. Right. Um, and basically a sits bath, it looks like a bowl and it it basically fits on your toilet seat. Um, and basically you put some warm water in, you could put again, some witch hazel in and you can put some herbs, um, in it as well. And actually some of my favorite, I actually, I'm making a gift basket. That's why I have a lot of this stuff here <laughs> is, um, this, I wish I knew, knew about these after I gave birth, but I had kind of the open herbs, which are great too, that you can yeah. kind of, um, steep first and then add to your sits bath or your bathtub but these which i found on wall.ca um are postpartum bath herbs but they're already in a pouch so it looks almost like a tea so pouch yeah. you just put them right in so you don't have to like steep it and then remove okay. it and all that um so i love those so again it's got different you know lavender and different healing herbs super helpful to put in your bath or your sits bath um and then going back to hemorrhoids so we talked about witch hazel for hemorrhoids um but also uh you know some people really like having a cream and there is preparation h which i think is probably the most common one out there um and again depending if you want something more natural or more um uh more medicine based depending what you're looking for um the one i found that's really it's more on the natural side it's called therawise hmr um, and I had it just in case I had it ready to go. I didn't end up um, needing to use it, but I had it ready to go. And yeah. I believe I got it on well.ca or also it's like, I think in more of the health food stores. Um, and, and I should say also like, and we're mm -hmm. going to talk about C-sections, but mm -hmm. a lot of women, even who gets, who ends up having a cesarean birth do end up having hemorrhoids as well. So I know we, kind of connect them with a um, vaginal delivery, but mm -hmm. it's good to have on hand regardless of what your plan mm -hmm. is. And I think the other thing too, Hannah, do you have a lot of clients who talk about hemorrhoids during pregnancy? Yeah. Because I hear that too. A couple of months, for sure. Yeah. So these, again, this isn't just for postpartum. This is like any time you have hemorrhoids or if they flare up or get irritated. Um, and then, so the final product, which Hannah is actually going to talk more about, is um, either an abdominal wrap or these core recovery shorts, which can help um, healing with the abdomen or just giving you some more support. But Hannah is going to talk more about those. Um, and then the final thing, which isn't a product at all, but it's rest. Um, and I know that can sound easier <laughs> said than done. Again, especially when we talked about if you've got more than one little one, but yeah. like even with one, like I've I had one and I remember like you just feel like there's just so much to do and your priorities get shifted. So it can be a challenge to rest. Um, but your body and your perineum, your pelvic floor will thank you for not being on your feet all day and resting. And if you can actually. So when you lie down or lie on your side, right, you're not getting that same pressure on the pelvic floor. Um, with sitting, sometimes you can still be getting lots of pressure. So not that we don't want you, you know, moving, being up and about. We're just here to say, you know, having support around you, being able to rest when you can, can just really help overall that it's not a race at the start. Try not to feel like, oh my gosh, I've got to get back to doing everything I used to do right away. If you can take whatever time you can to rest, because um, yeah, your body will will thank you. Um, um, we had a question from Ali. Hi, Ali. Thank you for joining us. Uh, who wanted hey. to know? Um, so, do you sit in a sits bath, and is it only for hemorrhoids? So, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you actually sit in the sits bath. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah. You like, literally yeah. Go ahead. 
Yeah, you literally sit on it. So it just covers. So Hannah, if you pull out the uh, the pelvis again, it literally sure. it just covers the whole red area, which is which are the muscles. Yeah. So you so, sit inside the toilet. Um, sorry, I'm like having trouble with this camera here. Got it. Um, so you sit in the toilet, and basically this part is in a bowl of water. Mm -hmm. and yeah. the rest of it sits like a toilet seat around and then there's a little dip where your bum yeah. and your pelvis yeah. Floor. yeah so part of why it can be helpful is you're not um like it can be quicker because you're literally sitting on it as if you were sitting on the toilet to go to the washroom yeah. i know that might sound funny but that's really what it is so it's different than a bath where you're getting totally undressed and towel and everything like you're just getting that part wet yeah. which makes it just a lot quicker and you would stay so you would sit um and even five to ten minutes every day some women end up doing it a few times a day um but even but for once a day, birth not yeah. just for hemorrhoids but yes. so for a vaginal birth yeah. so if you have a cesarean birth and then you have hemorrhoids you can do it too Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, definitely tearing or episiotomy, or like I said, even if you don't have either of those, but there's just swelling, which again is, you know, a very common thing to happen afterwards. Um, just, you know, having that can just help promote healing in that area. That was a great question. Love it. Yeah, awesome. Hope anything, I answered your question. Yeah, anything to add, Hana, like any other um, items I that you thought of? By, for my first delivery, I was like afterwards, I felt like I had to go, 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 go. Uh, mm -hmm. for, by my third, I was um, basically waking up. I'd feed my son. I'd take my kids to school, come home, and I would turn off my phone and go to sleep for three hours. And my recovery was way faster because of it. Mm -hmm. um, I did whatever I had to do in the afternoon. But as soon as like I had a couple, little bit of time in the morning, I had a set time. The rest mm -hmm. just, you know, it's everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great advice. All right. All right. So why don't we go on? Yeah. Why don't we go into now? So Hana, um, another common question is, so now after a cesarean birth, what, um, what would you recommend for recovery that may be different than a vaginal birth or similar? Right. So I think we cannot say this enough rest would be number one. So the difference with a cesarean birth is that they actually cut through your abdominal wall. So I'm, again, gonna have some trouble here, found it, okay. So they cut through your abdominal wall, basically right above where your pelvis is. And they cut through four layers of muscles and different layers of tissue and skin and fascia, and so with, all of that has to heal, right? Mm -hmm. So um, number one is you have to treat yourself like you did just have surgery. Um, I think that many women who have had a cesarean birth are like, was it, you know, it was just a birth, but it is a surgery and we have to take it um, as seriously as that and allow your body to heal in that way. Mm -hmm. So rest, Number one, um, a lot of women find that when they're moving about in the initial couple of days, it's kind of hard if they don't split. So what I mean by that is kind of taking your hands and placing pressure on your abdomen over the, over the scar area, basically. So mm -hmm. I'm going to stand up and show you. You ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. So... If, if you were, were cut right here, for example, you would place your hand over your belly and you would add some pressure back. A lot of women find that using a pillow to do that as well is necessary for like such basic things as like getting out of bed, um, which you could roll to the side instead of, instead of using your abdominals, for example abdominals for example um, um even sitting to standing for the first couple of days may be a little challenging without that additional support um and during this initial period postpartum is when um your 
abdominals, which have been stretched during pregnancy, would be recovering as well. Mm -hmm. So um, during pregnancy in the last trimester, and if you want more information about this, we have done a whole Facebook Live on it. Mm -hmm. But during the um, third trimester, essentially your six pack um, muscles, so your three pack and your three pack, start to stretch. So the um, tissue between them stretches apart. And um, and in the first six weeks we postpartum is when that would naturally come back together. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So when, um, when you have a cesarean section, they actually cut through those, um, those muscles. So I, I do recommend an abdominal binder or not a binder, sorry, a splint, something with gentle compression to help with diastasis recovery for the first six to eight weeks. But it's even more important with a cesarean section because we can actually um, flip it backwards and create where the piece that you put on your back would actually be placed on your belly and provide you with that support. Mm -hmm. Also can be key uh, coughing, sneezing because of the pressure. Downward pressure. That sure. pushes, and, pushes out. Yeah, yeah and, and on the toilet, right? Mm -hmm. That first bowel movement is scary. And a lot of women find that um, actually perineal support, so putting pressure upwards if you've had a vaginal delivery, or putting pressure on your abdominal scar really helps with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the the other thing that we actually didn't talk about with a vaginal delivery, but is equally important, is when you start to notice your scar coming together and things starting to heal. It's actually touch gently touch that scar. You don't want this is your scar. I'm like gently touching it there. Um, you don't want to completely neglect to touch that area. Um, the longer you kind of take, the, the kind of the more icky it seems. Um, and we really want that tissue to heal well and for, um, and, and for it to be part of your body, for you to start using it as normally as possible, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and definitely, you know, if, um, how Hannah mentioned, like if there's an infection, you don't want to be touching it. Mm -hmm. um, but even those initial couple will just to touch the area even around the scar. Yeah. Um, we'll be talking more on our next Facebook Live kind of about the 12 weeks of postpartum healing and we'll talk more about massage of the scar. Um, but how Hannah mentioned like initially even just touching around it um, or depending how it's healing, maybe really gently on it, but even just around it initially um yeah. as long as that's comfortable any pain you don't want to be pushing into that um right. and yeah and just giving it those first few weeks it does need time to heal properly yeah and the same thing with a perineal scar um if you you know like i remember going to my obstetrician at my six week follow-up and be saying like are all this scar is sorry are all the stitches removed and like they looked at me like, are you, are you kidding? Like I did not go near the area and I wish in retrospect, I had really um, paid attention a lot earlier. Um, things would have been very different for me. So I tell everybody now um, mm -hmm. that they should make sure to gently touch the area as soon as they are comfortable doing so. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of different for each person. Yeah. And everyone's going to be different. Like some women aren't comfortable until six weeks. And, and, um, even initially, like after going to the washroom, like even just padding along the area, just, yeah. you know, get an idea how it's feeling as it's healing. So definitely we're not saying to, you know, vigorously rub or like press or anything no. like that. And if you're not comfortable looking with the mirror, don't, um, it is something that is just like, we're just talking about general healing with based on what you're comfortable with yeah. and beyond six weeks, that's when we'll kind of go a little bit more into, you know, pressing on the area yeah. or massage yeah. if needed. Right now it's just, 
be aware. I have a hello from Marlene. Hi, Marlene. Hey. <laughs> um, she's doing seven weeks. So wow, feel good. And send us all your questions. Congratulations. Um, okay. So we are going to just do a little brief recap. Mm -hmm. So if you're just joining us now, um, welcome. Anita and I have been talking about two um, of the areas where our top tips kind of are focused. We just finished talking about healing from a vaginal delivery and our top tips for healing from a cesarean delivery. Um, and so if you're joining us now, make sure to uh, go back and follow through um, and mm -hmm. say hi. Yeah, okay. keep watching us and then go back and watch the yeah. replay to catch the initial parts, yeah. So Anita, mm -hmm. what exercise can we perform immediately? Mm -hmm. how, many, how many times do you get this question? Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity. Oh, lots, lots. <laughs> and that's why I think it's good, again, talking about this during pregnancy so that, you know, postpartum you're prepared, yeah, and to understand, like, what's okay. Because I know it's kind of a general trend of, like, wait till six weeks to do any exercise. Um, and I do think a lot of um, people do hear that and listen to that and, you know, take that um, to heart. But then kind of at six weeks, it's kind of like then jumping, like, way, way ahead um, in terms of exercise. So these are things just, again, those first two weeks is what we're talking about at our next Facebook Live. We'll talk about beyond that, those first 12 weeks. Um, so initially kind of going back to this is not an exercise, but rest, right? So <laughs> it's that, we're not, that we're not pushing things, you know, so in terms of walking and just gradually building up with walking. So you're not going to be walking. So whatever you were walking the day you went into labor, and every every um, pregnant person is different, right, in terms of where they're at with walking the day they give birth. But let's say you were walking with no issues, no pain, no discomfort, and then you give birth and your expectation is to do the exact same thing right yeah. after. We highly recommend you take a big step back yeah. um, and just grab, just do a little bit of walking and resting is key. I um, think a lot of women think that as soon as they deliver, Mm -hmm. They'll get back to their pre-pregnancy level mm -hmm. of exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and so even in saying take a step back, mm -hmm. I would say like start from mm -hmm. the very beginning and then build up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that everyone's going to be different, too, in terms of, um, like I said, whether, you know, episiotomy, tearing, no tearing, cesarean birth um, to you know, take it easy as you go and not be pushing things. Um, but something we do talk about is kind of posture. So if you've watched any of Hannah and I's videos, you, we talk about the ribs over the pelvis idea. Um, and I do it all the time with clients in every session and it's so key. Um, so the idea that we want our rib cage stacked over our pelvis, which sounds simple enough, but oftentimes um, during pregnancy, because our belly grows and chest grows, our ribs sit behind our pelvis. Um, and if you practice ribs over pelvis during pregnancy, it just helps you that much more um, for afterwards. After baby comes out, your center of gravity, your body's trying to figure out, you know, this, this essentially new body, new body right? Yeah. Um, so that can be key. So one of the tips I give um, a lot of my clients to know if your ribs are stocked over your pelvis is if you just take a random deep breath, if that deep breath is in your ribs, likely you're stacked because that rib breath kind of shows us that the ribs are over the pelvis. So your diaphragm is over your pelvic floor, which are two key muscles um, that are part of your core. Um, so even just checking in with that, if you're standing, walking, if you're holding your baby, if you're baby wearing, just take that random breath. And especially with baby wearing, and we'll go over more of that next time, but ribs over pelvis is key. If you have your baby in your sling or your wrap, um, especially early postpartum, and you're kind of nervous about them, so you're way back here yeah. trying to support them, it it can be more uh, more work for your body essentially. So if you can get your ribs over your pelvis, that can be super helpful. Um, and something, you know, I have a lot of people who are like, oh my God, and it's a perfect posture. And really, mm -hmm. especially during this like time when you're so tired, 
I like to emphasize, you don't want to be in the exact same posture each time. So Mm -hmm. meaning like if you're feeding your baby like this Mm -hmm. every single time, it's, you're going to have pain. Like you'll, you'll end up with neck pain and shoulder pain and a whole host of other stuff. But if you feed them once like this, don't, don't lose sleep over that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sleep over other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But we want to work towards this rib over pelvis concept. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. don't you know? Don't feel like you're shooting yourself in the in the foot. If there was one exhausted feed, mm-hmm. or many, where or many. not necessarily yeah. in the greatest posture ever. Yeah, that's okay. And that's- Totally fine. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Um, exactly. And so kind of what I end up talking about more so with clients is being mindful of more when you're standing or walking or pushing the stroller. And that's why I like to talk about it's just like randomly check in with yourself. Um, and we'll be talking about that, that exactly we don't need to live our entire life with ribs over a pelvis. Yeah. Um, but when we're talking about the healing um, after birth or during pregnancy or at any time, getting that core um, to kick on a little bit better to help with symptoms, um, then that ribs over pelvis just can be really helpful. Um, And a lot of times when we have, I have clients check their breath and I'll have them stand where they normally stand and they check their breath. And usually if you're watching this, even just try where you are, just take a deep breath. You may notice it's all in your chest or all in your abdomen. And then if you bring your ribs, generally you have to bring them forward. So they're stacked right on your um, pelvis. Yeah. And if you have a mirror beside you, you can check. Take a deep breath. And if your ribs are over your pelvis, you'll literally feel your rib cage like open like an umbrella. Like it just goes yeah. as you yeah. inhale. That's yeah. what you're looking for. So it's an easy way to check in because we don't have a mirror follow us all day, right? Yeah. Um, and so if you can just check in with your breath, it, it just gives you also confidence of being like, okay, like likely, you know, my diaphragm, pelvic floor, things are, things are starting to work with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, what we, uh, especially during the first couple of weeks when you're actually mm-hmm. feeding around the clock, mm-hmm. feeding's a good time to start to think about your breath because mm-hmm. you're doing it so often mm-hmm. so especially if you're not going to set you're not going to have time to set aside mm-hmm. associating it with something you tend to do often yeah. is, is often an easy thing to do yeah no exactly so feeding so whether you're breastfeeding chest feeding uh, bottle feeding um or even you know even checking in if you're changing a diaper and it's not necessarily going to be. Thing you do very exactly. often. <laughs> gonna, you're not necessarily going to check while you're changing the diaper, but <laughs> even when you're done changing the diaper, you lift your baby. Check, just check. Yeah. So the more often you can just check in, the more it'll become your your new normal. But again, it's one of those things. There's lots to think about. So Han and I are just giving recommendations of things to just kind of bring in here and there, and just the more often that that happens, then it'll just be easier yep. later on. Yep. Thousand percent. Yeah. And yep. then in terms of, um, so we talked about walking, other exercise. So um, you may have heard us talk about as well. So something called, you know, the piston breath by Julie Weeb, who's a physio or core breath by Belly Zink. And this idea of the diaphragm and pelvic floor, again, working as a team and this corset muscle around the minute uh, middle. Um, so kind of as you're breathing in, pelvic floor is relaxing, right. ribs are opening as you Should breathe out. Should I do my sure. I yeah. got it. Yeah. <laughs> as you breathe out, you know, if you're thinking of, I often, we talk about blueberry mm-hmm. or a okay. pebble or a bean at your vaginal and rectal opening that you're lifting those yep. as you breathe out and then inhale to lower them. Yep. And again, this is something, inhale. if this seems overwhelming, don't worry about it at all. Um, this is often, you know, if we've seen uh, clients during pregnancy, they will have learned this breath. Or if you've seen any online, there's a lot of online resources to check yeah. out. Um, but and then the final one of the first things we talk about the first visit when we see clients. Yeah first visit back. Um, And then the flower bloom is another breath that a lot of clients will use during labor. And it's about relaxation, uh, relaxing the pelvic floor, basically. So this inhale flower bloom, exhale, keep it open. Um, And often with clients, I'll just say, you know, again, how Hannah said, like either with feeding or with changing diaper, 
do a couple of, you know, the breath of engaging and then another time do some flower blooms, like just balancing them out, doing them a little bit those first couple weeks. Um, but even more important, if those seem, again, too much to think about, just breathing into your ribs. That's the yeah. number one thing I talk yeah. about along with posture, because when you're pregnant, right, baby and uterus, they get priority. So your diaphragm gets pushed up. And some of you watching may have, you know, experienced kind of shortness of breath, which happens yeah. for various Marlene, reasons. Marlene, I'm sure. Is yeah. That? Yeah. And not just because of the diaphragm position. There are other reasons for shortness of breath. Yeah. Um, but that is one of them. So as your diaphragm is kind of finding its new home after babies come out, that rib like that rib breath is so key and how we keep talking about the ribs and or the diaphragm and pelvic floor they're a team um how they work so if you're just solely focused on trying to squeeze the pelvic floor and you're not getting a nice Winky, breath blinky, blinky, yeah it's one of those things Hana and i both see this in our practice that if all you do is think of squeezing from the bottom and you don't get a really great rib breath you won't have that same activation from the bottom. So the idea is when your diaphragm lifts, when you breathe out, it should help recoil your pelvic floor up. So yeah. if you're not getting expansion up in your ribs, it's that much harder for your pelvic floor to activate or to release. Um, so again, kind of the, the key things would be with exercise immediately these two weeks postpartum. So posture, ribs over pelvis, um, and your rib breath would be the key things, doing some light walking and resting. So those would kind of be the, the four key things. Yeah, um, absolutely. And if anything yeah. causes pain, just don't do it. Wait a little bit. Let yeah. your, it's your body's way of saying, yeah. I'm not ready yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. It's not a time to push things. That pushing in these two, first two weeks, but even we're going to talk about that fourth trimester, the first 12 weeks, I can't emphasize enough how it's really not worth it. Um, even if you feel amazing that you could go and run a marathon, it's often not helpful because if you feel amazing and you don't have symptoms like leaking or heaviness and you jump too far ahead, you may find yourself going backwards, um, which you can still come back from, but it, you know, it's a step back um, in terms of continually seeing that progress forward. Yeah, a, a, a thousand percent. I think that, um, it's a time it, we, we really have to hold ourselves back in mm -hmm. order to move forward as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a good point to bring up. I know we've said it a few times and it's like trying to figure out another way to say it. And we don't want women or, you know, birthing people to feel um, held back or a step back. Yeah. Um, but it's just we're giving some guidance on how to keep you progressing forward, which may feel like you're holding back from what you're used to. Um, but it's just going to really in the long run, you'll your body, your pelvic floor, your core, and just your Thank being you. will be happier that way. Yeah. And I always um, say, um, people don't, you don't want to progress um, and think, I hope it's okay. I hope it's okay. You want to mm -hmm. take the next step forward and say, I know my body is ready for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so then we've talked about kind of physical healing. Um, and so, Hannah, what would you say, what are some other top tips for the first two weeks um, after birth that may not be to do with exercise or specifically pelvic floor or core? Yeah. So we've talked about it, but we're going to talk about it again, because I just don't think it can be um, mentioned often enough. Mm -hmm. During this time, it's a time of recovery, and you actually have to take care of yourself. It's important to eat meals, it's important to drink water, it's important to get rest. And a lot of that stuff, if you haven't prepared for that beforehand, is really challenging. So mm -hmm. if you're not in the first two weeks yet. If you are still pregnant, that's an amazing time to prepare for birth. So mm -hmm. prepare food, like prepare mm -hmm. stuff and put it in your freezer. Mm -hmm. Or you know what? Set up, there are meal trains now. So get a whole bunch of your friends to sign up and choose dates and get them to send you dinner. But you know mm -hmm. what? Almost as important, get them to send you lunch. Mm -hmm. right? Because it's you're so involved with taking care of this stunningly beautiful, miraculous creature that is 
taken over your life that women often forget to take care of themselves. And then it just, it actually delays the healing process. We, mm-hmm. You need your energy as much as possible. So, Can I add, I'm going to add something, Hannah. Okay, do it. Just, just about food. So a couple tips I know found helpful is food you can eat with one hand. So soups and like chilies, smoothies, anything you can put in a mug, I found with super straw. helpful. A straw yes. is key. Yeah, because you can drink in any position, um, but also you'll find when you have a little one or if you have multiple little ones, you really wish you had more than two hands. Um, <laughs> so if you at least well, have one. I wish I had 12 hands. <laughs> yeah, if you have one available, that's super helpful. Another thing was, which I didn't even think about, one of my good friends, um, Kelly, I don't know if she's watching. Um, hi. Uh, she got for my uh, baby shower is there was a kind of a, uh, a local food delivery kind of it was like farm to table, yeah. super healthy food. Um, and she got a package. It was like the newborn package um, and they delivered it to us. And it was food that lasted us uh, at least a few days for myself, um, my husband. Um, and we still had some if people were coming over. So we actually ended up using it, I think, in our second or third week postpartum because we had frozen a lot of food. Um, But that can be helpful. So shower gift or shower registry, I would highly recommend asking or giving that. Um, It was amazing. It was super, super awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. And people are going to be calling you postpartum and saying, congratulations, what can I do? Your answer is going to be, Thanks for asking. You can bring me over a meal. You can do my laundry. (laughs) Um, You really, you have to either make use of your support system Mm -hmm. or if you are able to um, create that support system. So postpartum doula, a night nurse if you're able to, or just a very kind, generous friend um, mm-hmm. or family member who wants to come over, even just to watch your baby for a little bit so you mm-hmm. can go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Take them up on those offers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, that's the thing is find out um, – ahead of time who's going to be support or supportive um, with that and that's why postpartum doulas I have a number of clients who get postpartum doulas um, and a lot of them actually it's not their first baby so they've gone through it before and they realize how key that support is and having a postpartum doula what can be really nice is that they're not family they're not friends you can tell them exactly what you want them to do or not do and you don't feel bad yeah um with it yes it is we totally understand it's not always accessible to everyone it does um cost a fee for postpartum doulas um but again if there's doulas in training um there's different you know experience levels um we would definitely recommend at least trying to seek out and seeing what opportunities are in your community um i know a number of postpartum doulas here who are fantastic and clients who've used them um and yeah it could just help to have that positive support system that you don't feel stressed about um if anything they're taking stress off your plate yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and so and that's something we recommend looking into um before delivery or before birth um Mm -hmm. But, you know, even in the first couple of days, it would be easy to set up as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Something else that if, you know, regardless of how you choose to feed, um, Mm -hmm. it's important to have support. So um, if you're choosing to breastfeed or if you would like to try to breastfeed, um, look into a lactation consultant in your area that that support is invaluable as well. Mm -hmm. And likewise, if you're planning to bottle feed, um, ask people, ask your friends, ask your, ask a pediatrician, what bottles should you use? What formula Mm -hmm. should you use? Have a couple of options Mm -hmm. available Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. in the first couple days, um, Mm -hmm. you don't want to have to be like consistently running out to the store or making, trying Mm -hmm. a million bottles and you know, mm-hmm. sanitizing them and going through that a hall process. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I know that some women, you know, ch- kind of switch between um, whether they're going to be breastfeeding or bottle feeding for whatever reasons. But 
as prepared as you can be, set things up. Yeah, and I'd say too, um, also during pregnancy, there can actually be a lot of really great courses. Um, I know here one of the doula collectives has like a pumping 101. So you may be bottle feeding with formula, you may be bottle feeding um, with your own milk, um, someone else's milk. Um, And even if you're going into birth, thinking, you know, I'm going to do one or the other or both, I would say learn about all of the options. Um, Because I think you know, sometimes uh, you end up feeding in one way that you didn't expect. Um, And it's just important to know everything. So, or know everything you can going into it. So that as well as there can be, if you're thinking that you may want to breastfeed, often there can be amazing breastfeeding courses. I know um, my husband and I did one. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, And just again, it's just, again, you won't, you won't know till you're in it. Um, how things are going to be because there's so many factors. Um, But again, any education you can have, similar to going into birth, any education you can have is just going to help you with decisions and help you navigate through um, the journey that you're on with it. So um, yeah, looking into, and even some places you can even book a lactation consultant based on your due date, like to have them booked for after birth, whether in in the hospital, often um, they'll be available. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if not, or even kind of after the hospital or depending where you're living, um, there's private options, how you're feeding. So then you feel comfortable. And if you have a partner um, or anyone supporting you can also help you with that, too. Right. So those can be great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that at the end of the day, information is power. Um, mm-hmm. And when you're Going into the end of pregnancy, either the last trimester, um, you want to start to think about what do I want? Maybe I'm going to inform myself um, and and just know because like um, birth, the first couple of weeks um, can go many directions. The more information you have, the um, easier it'll be. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Love it. So um, let's uh, chat about our top resources. Mm -hmm. So Anita, Mm -hmm. what are your top resources? Yeah. So Hannah and I were chatting to figure out, you know, what resources are we going to recommend? And there are a lot and a lot that we talked about. So don't forget if you're just catching us or if you didn't get to watch the whole thing, um, our whole live um, interview is to go back and check because there's a lot of resources we talked along the way. Um, But we're going to kind of narrow it down to five that can be helpful. Um, So one is to check. So it's a website called publichealthsolutions.ca. And this is where if you're looking for a pelvic health physiotherapist, um, you can find for Ontario and other areas in Canada. Um, and if you're not watching um, in Canada, definitely seek out, you can seek out pelvic health physiotherapists in your area to either see, again, during pregnancy, but also postpartum recovery. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily see them in those first two weeks. But again, kind of like how we talked with, with the lactation consultant, even having that kind of appointment or that in place for postpartum can give you confidence of having someone help you with your healing. Um, so that would be number one. Uh, number two, how we talked about doulas. So um, today we weren't specifically talking about birth, but definitely there are birth doulas and there are postpartum doulas. Um, so checking in your community, um, some of the kind of certifying organizations, um, if you want to check out, so Baby Mia, um, which is an awesome organization based out of Toronto, but um, trains doulas all around the world. Um, also, Donna International is another one, um, and Doula uh, Training Canada is another one. So we'll just make sure to link that below. And so just looking up postpartum doulas uh, in your community, and you know, talking to them ahead of time, is super helpful. Um, also, and then, like interviewing them um, yes. so that you know that you guys connect. Yeah, that you click right. Yeah. Um, and then third, um, we're just going to link to if you want kind of a, a quick little video about for the postpartum perineal healing items. Um, I did a quick video on that, so we're just gonna link to that in case you're interested just getting that little snippet. 
um, a video. So we'll make sure those are below. Um, oh, I see. Is it Anastasia? Anastasia. Yeah. Thanks, Anastasia. You're uh, welcome. Congrats and feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and be in touch if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Um, awesome. So those are kind of the first three uh, tip or three resources. And then Hana, you had two more to add. Um, so I wanted to add about uh, lactation consult consultants. Um, you know, check in your area. Many hospitals have OHIP covered um, lactation consultants in the hospital. So you'd have to go to the hospital. But um, there are a lot of independent lactation consultants who will come to your house. So ask around in your area. Um, f again, find somebody who you connect with and, and set that up before your birth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we should mention too, so just so that people know who are watching, so OHIP is like, if you live in Ontario, yeah. it's our it's our public medical system. I just want to check because I know we have – um, people watching from all over um, yeah. and in every province has their own kind of public um, in medical system. Yeah. But then also if you're not in Canada, um, so we're talking about like there's public um, provided uh, lactation consultants versus and private. private. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for explaining <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and last but not least, I actually wanted to talk about um, an event that my clinic is sponsoring. Um, we're putting on an event December 3rd um, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. If you are in Ontario and in Toronto, please come. Um, we're putting it on with Nikki Bergen from The Bell Method. And it's called Your Birth Dream Team. And what we're doing is we're providing an afternoon where we are having a multitude of different speakers. We're going to have a lactation consultant. We're going to have a sleep consultant. We're going to have somebody talking about pleasure after delivery. We're going to have an OB, a midwife, um, a doula, a pelvic physio. I'll give you a hint. That pelvic physio is um, <laughs> And uh, Nikki is a prenatal and postpartum trainer. And we're really going to educate everybody about um, the different people who can be part of your dream team. And that's kind of what we were talking about today. Mm -hmm. So um, I will link to that event um, mm -hmm. as well in the comments mm -hmm. section. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, basically, to summarize, Anita and I just gave you a almost hour of amazing information on how to prepare for the first two weeks postpartum. Um, we're going to link to the resources below, below in the comments. Um, we talked about your perineum. We talked about recovery from C-section. We talked about exercise and just generally how to ensure that you are well in the first two weeks postpartum. Mm -hmm. um, so Anita, how can people find you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you can find me online. You can uh, check out in terms of on Facebook at Holistic Health Physio as well as Instagram at Holistic Health Physio. Um, or you can find me over on my website at holistichealthphysio.com or feel free to shoot me an email at anita at holistichealthphysio.com. And I just wanted to mention as well, um, everything that Hannah said, um, like we, we spoke about it for almost an hour and this is information that often <laughs> Is totally skipped that. over yeah. in a lot of prenatal courses. Um, and to find this online, you're going to be piecing things together. So please also share this with other expecting um, people that you know. Uh, just because th to have all this information in one place is so key. And Hannah and I love sharing this with clients. And we just want to get more information out there in general. So, you know, hit the share button and just yeah. share this um, with anyone you know who's expecting. Yeah. Um, and then genuinely appreciate it. Yeah. And Hannah, where can people find you? Awesome. So um, people can find me on my website, vitalphysiotherapy.com. They can find us on Facebook, where you're watching this right now, um, Vital Physiotherapy and, and Wellness backslash Toronto. Um, you can find us on 
Instagram at Vital Physiotherapy and Wellness. Um, and you can send me an email, um, C H A N A, Chana, otherwise known as Hannah, at vitalphysiotherapy.com. Mm -hmm. um, so be sure to like my Facebook page and Anita's Facebook page. Facebook page, Holistic Health Physio and Vital Physiotherapy and Wellness. Um, and we are actually super excited about our next Facebook Live, mm -hmm. um, where we're going to talk about, like Anita said, the fourth trimester, which is the first 12 mm -hmm. weeks postpartum. And there really mm -hmm. is specific um, tools that you can use, specialized mm -hmm. tips um, in order to optimize your recovery and mm -hmm get you um where you want to be postpartum mm -hmm. um so thank you for joining us and if you guys have any questions keep them coming we'll continue to answer them in the comments section mm -hmm. have a good night everybody awesome bye everyone <laughs>